Hi, I'm back again to talk to you a little bit more about habits. I was just talking to you a little bit earlier about how important it is to be able to learn, as a, a small child learns, how to have that um, dexterity, that control of movement through space. And being dexterous, being able to do things with our hands, is really partially what we are up on our hind limbs, limbs to be able to do, so that we can pick things up, so that we can do functional activities, we can do really quite complex tasks with our upper limbs. But when a young baby is born, one of the really thing, most important things is the way in which that baby is, is relatively vulnerable. Um, a small baby can't roll over and run away from a large tiger. Its mother has to be able to pick it up. So the parent has to be able to run, has to be able to protect, because that baby is, is incredibly vulnerable. Now, as we learn how to move, there are actually a whole series of patterns of movement which we learn to do in what is called a developmental sequence. Now, when I studied as a physiotherapist, um, going back to when I was working with people with what is called neurological problems, these are the problems that people have with their nervous system, um, problems like strokes, head injuries, um, people who've got multiple sclerosis, people who've got any of the movement disorders. These are called neurological problems. And as a physiotherapist, um, a lot of what we do is in relation to different forms of movement. Um, and as I've already said in a previous podcast, I specialize in working with people who have movement pattern disorders. I work with people with habituation. So part of the sequence of movement is that um, we learn certain things at certain times. So a small baby um, will learn how to bend its legs up and lift its bottom in the air. It will learn how to reach with its arms and look. It will learn how to roll over. It will learn how to push on its feet and roll over. It will learn how to roll from one side over to the other side. It will learn how to roll right over onto its tummy. And if you ever have any children, you'll know that sometimes if you leave your child in the crib, you'll know that the child has been exploring movement. Because when you come in the morning, you'll find the baby is lying with its head, say, pushed right up against the end of the crib, where you put them quite comfortably further down. Or they're lying right over to the side, or squashed up against the bars of the crib, and they got themselves into a really awkward position, and they're crying away because they've got themselves stuck. They don't know how to get out of that position. Uh, I can certainly remember when my son was little, he used to hate it when he managed to learn how to roll himself over onto his tummy. Because once he got onto his front, he didn't know what to do. He'd lie there and he'd lift his arms and legs up, um, and he'd just be stranded. But learning how to roll over, learning how to roll from side to side, onto your front, onto your back, rolling over, and then eventually the baby begins to start to learn how to actually roll either over onto their front, and then begin to push up on their arms, so they have that sort of back arched pattern that you see in a, in a lot of photographs. We have these lovely photographs. I've certainly got some of my young children when they could lie down and their head was in the air like this, and their spine was in a lovely sort of seal-like configuration away, and they were pushing there on their arms, proudly looking at you from sideways on. Um, and then you might find that they push up, and they learn how to push back onto their knees. And they might then come up into a crawling position, or some children learn to come up into a sitting position, and then some children learn how to bum shuffle. You know what I mean by bum shuffling? They sort of pull themselves along with their feet and they move along. Some children learn how to crawl. Uh, they learn to see that they rock backwards and forwards, um, and then eventually they learn how to coordinate, and eventually pull up into uh, standing and then eventually to get their balance in standing, to learn how to walk, uh, to learn how to go back down onto the floor and get back up again, to learn how to go from a, a walk to climbing, to learn how to go from climbing to jumping. See, jumping? Jumping is something that children love to do. They love to jump up and down. They love to push on their legs. Um, and then eventually to get onto the more sort of high-level activities such as you know, stair climbing, running, hopping, skipping, jumping, managing a bicycle. If you think of all of those activities, how old were you when you learned how to ride a bicycle? 
How old were you when you could skip easily with the skipping rope? Some people don't learn, some children don't learn how to skip until they're six, seven years old. Some children don't learn how to ride a bicycle until they're seven years old. So if you think of the process of learning how to do all of this movement, it can take quite a long time. And because it takes quite a long time, once we've managed to achieve something, like learning how to roll over, then oftentimes, once we've learned how to do it, we don't go back and explore how to do it a different way. So movement patterns, movement habits, habituation, if you like, starts off really, really young. Once you've been able to know how to push from lying on your back to rolling over onto your side, and you've learned a way to do it, and it works for you, there's no real reason there's no motivation to go back and change the way that you do it. Now the only problem is that a lot of the people who come to see me have got to a point in life where they've got so set in their ways that what's starting to happen is that they've actually started to get physical pain. They've got aches and pains in their muscles because of the habits that they have when they're using themselves and they don't know what they're doing it. What I'm going to be doing next time is telling you a little bit more about some of the ways that we can learn how to break some of these habits. Thank you.